So in this screencast, we're going to be talking about example 14.3, where we're calculating the Michaelis-Menten enzyme kinetics parameters using both the linear least squares and non-linear least squares implemented through Excel's solver. So um, this is actually very similar to the previous example, except for instead of using the Arrhenius equation, we're using this being the Michaelis-Menten enzyme kinetics equation, which we talked about in the last lecture. In this case, you have the parameters Vmax, which appears here, and KM, which appears here. And so what we want to do is use the data in the provided Excel file to find Vmax and KM by the two different methods. And by the way, the, de the data from the Excel file were generated assuming that these were the values of Vmax and KM. Okay, so to start first, we um, have to transform the equation into one that is suitable for a line, which is what we've done here. This is just like we did in the previous um, lecture. And then also our slope is this, and our intercept would be this. So taking these two relationships, we can find Vmax by the following. Vmax equals to 1 over the intercept. And Km is equal to the slope over the intercept. And what we're going to do then is use solver and compute what the values of these are. So to do that, I have my data here for my substrate values and for the, um, the rate values here, v, capital V. And this is what the, the data look like in our plot. Now note that my substrate values start at 0 0.01 millimolar, 0 0.03, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and then it gets to 1 millimolar and beyond after that. So remember, when we transformed the equation, we transformed it into this form here, where we have 1 over V as a function of 1 over capital S. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say this one is equal to 1 over this guy here. And then I'm going to fill that down. Like so. And this one is equal to 1 over this guy here. And I'm going to fill that down. Okay, so what you see is that this is what the data really look like. And as we scroll down, this is what the data look like when they are put into this linear form. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the function slope and intercept, as we did before, to get the values of the slope and the intercept of the, this linear relationship. And so this is how you would implement the slope. And this is how you would implement the intercept. Now to find V max, it was 1 over the intercept, so this is equal to 1 over the intercept. And this one was equal to the slope oops, over the intercept. And so we see here that my V max is 1.12 and my K calc is 0.93. Now we note here that the percent error is terrible in this particular case. So if I scroll up, what were they supposed to be? They're supposed to be 2.3 for this one and 1.8 for this one. So they're about 50% off in each case. So what does this look like in terms of the linear? Well, let's go ahead and fill out what the linear would be. So it's um, 1 over V is equal to the slope times 1 over S plus the intercept. And of course, what I want to do here is I want to make these static references. So let me do that. Very good. And then I'm going to fill down, and then the line will appear here, which I've already pre-filled on the graph. And so the line looks like it fits pretty well. The problem is when I convert back to my v, act my, um, v linear here, then it's really not going to fit this graph very well at all. And so the, before I do that, I'm going to type in what V actual is. So V actual, that would be equal to V max times S over K plus S. Right here, and I'm gonna, I want to make my Vmax and my K static references. And by V actual, I'm referring to what the real values were that I used to generate these data for the example. So, okay, so this is what it really is supposed to be. So, there we go. And if I fill that down, it looks pretty good. And the line actually, or the curve, fits, goes through the dots pretty well. Now, if I use V linear uh, being my calculation from my linear estimate, which is 1 over this one. So 1 over 1 over v linear is v linear, like that, and then fill that down. 
and the curve will appear directly in the plot. This is actually a really terrible uh, fit to the actual curve. Okay, so what does this mean? So this means that when, in some cases, like in the Arrhenius case, when you transform the relationship into one of a line and fit the data, sometimes you get a good answer, maybe even better than what Solver can give you with nonlinear least squares. Sometimes it gives you an actually really terrible answer. And so you really kind of, at this point, you just have to look by eye, hey, was that a good answer that the um, linear fit gave me? And the answer is no in this case. Okay, you can see that the percent error is horrendous, although you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you generated the data artificially like I did. So if this were, these were experimental data points that you took in the lab, then you wouldn't know what the real values were, but just by plotting your solution, which is the screen curve here, and looking at it versus your data, you could say, hey, wait, this is way off, right? And so maybe I need to use a nonlinear least squares fitting method here. Now, why did this happen? Well, I think the reason why this happened in this particular case is that you had this data point which is for 0.01, and this other data point, 0.03. Now, this one actually controls most of your um, slope in, and, your, and your intercept in the linear fit. And the reason why is because 1 over 0.01 is 100. All of the other points, so that's this white point way out here, all the other points cluster way over here. In particular, these points down here are clustered very close to 0, which is 1 over these points here. And so you get this one point, which is excessively controlling what's going on. And then you have these, um, and if there's enough error in this point right out here, if there's a large enough error bar, then this is going to really throw off your estimate. So I'm going back over to the lecture notes. Um, what we've calculated in part A was that Vmax was equal to 1.13, and Km was equal to 0 0.931 totally way off. Okay, so now for part B, we're going to head back over to Excel and look at how solver was used to solve these equations. Okay, so um, what we want to do here is we want to kind of calculate what is the value of the, the nonlinear solution, calculate the error from our data, and then minimize the sum of the square of the error as we have done before. Now, um, I don't want to start with this as my starting guess because that could be basically make a <laughs> solver would automatically converge onto the exact right answer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 1 and 1 for my starting guesses. Okay? So V nonlinear in this case is equal to V max times S over K, oops, K plus S. All right? And then I'm going to make those against static references for Vmax and Km. Now note, the Km and Vmax that I'm using here are the ones that I'm going to ask Solver to vary in order to minimize the sum of the square of the errors. Okay, So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this down. There we go. And you see, right, that's really bad. Okay, Kind of like what we had before. But don't worry, solver is going to fix that. Okay, I'm going to make the error squared here. So this is equal to v minus v using our nonlinear estimate squared. And fill this down here. Okay, so now our sum of the square of the error is medium amount. Okay, so let's run solver and say solver. If I try to minimize this guy here, by varying these two cells. And I want to minimize, right? So right now it says value of zero, but I just want to click the minimum. And then I say solve, which is off the screen for you, but I'm going to go down here and click it, solve. And the answer that it got was actually fairly close to the right answer. So I was only 1% off in Vmax and 10% off in K, um, Km. And the, the what that meant is that meant that the curve goes pretty well through the points. So how does this relate to V actual? which is the same formula for V actual, essentially, that I had on the previous sheet. And fill that down. The two curves basically line up on top of each other. And that's because it actually, well, oops, this goes away. And that's because this, uh, the solver solution is actually really close to what the actual solution is supposed to be. So what I have here is for part B, I have V max equals 2.27. And for Km equals 1.62. And these aren't too far off. They're a lot better than what I got for these values here. Okay, so the percent error for each case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a little table for that. 
So in part A, the percent error would be here. So for Vmax, it was minus 51.1%. For KM, it was minus 48.3%. And for part B, the error was much smaller. For, K, for Vmax, it was 1.09%, minus 1.09. And for KM, 10.2%. And so you can see that in this case, using solver gave you a much better answer than using the linear least squares fitting, which in a way it made sense because in the linear least squares fitting, you're kind of transforming your data in a way that you don't know what's happening to it. Your error bars are changing drastically. So in general, using the non-linear least squares fitting method is a little bit better. Sometimes solver just doesn't do a good job. Um, <laughs> and so it doesn't converge onto a good solution very well. And so that might be a drawback for using the nonlinear least squares fitting method in this class. Of course, we could do um, fmin search. We could do LSQ nonlin or some other method that MATLAB has to do it, which would be a lot more robust. But we're not going to cover that. So we're just going to use solver in this class to do nonlinear least squares fitting.